Hello and welcome to this new video in the Big Data Playlist. In this video, we will discuss about cloud computing. Let's get started. Cloud computing is a service offering where we can rent resources online. Mostly it follows a pay-as-you-go pricing model, which means pay only for what you use. Top providers in cloud computing are Amazon, Microsoft and Google. Those who are working on the cloud computing platform, they already know this. Amazon provides the cloud computing solution called as AWS. Microsoft has Azure and Google has GCP, which is Google Cloud Platform. There are many more vendors. I have just listed the top ones. Let's see the benefits. Since it follows pay-as-you-go pricing model, you only pay for what you use. You can scale resources within few seconds or even you can provision the resources within few seconds to minutes. Easy to learn and to use because it provides a web interface. You don't have to install any files like you don't have to download any exe files on your windows and set up the installation and go through a cumbersome process. Just you can log in into web as you log in into any other website. That's how it is easy to use fully managed by service providers what this means is you don't have to worry about the installation any updates or patches it is all taken care by the vendors which are Microsoft Google or Amazon whatever you choose and it provides ease in development people who have been watching our cloud computing videos on Azure platform they know this highly available and we have discussed about this feature as well in one of our recent videos now I'm going to just throw some light on Azure, which is a cloud computing platform provided by Microsoft. It also follows the same pay-as-you-go pricing model. So you pay only for what you use. And you can provision uh, services within seconds to minutes. Provision is just like installation. So let's say you sign up for Azure, uh, which provides you $200 credit and 28 days or somewhat about a month, near a month, free services to use. And thereafter you have to upgrade to pay as you go which means you will be only billed for whatever you use and you can just get started with provisioning services like data lake azure data factory sql database within seconds to minutes that's how that's how easy it is so let's talk about the components what you should learn or what you should be knowing to work as a data engineer on azure these are few components which I've listed out over here. I'll talk about them briefly in the next few slides. The first one is ADLS. Think of this like what you had HDFS in Hadoop. Here we have ADLS. So ADLS stands for Azure Data Lake Storage. The recent version, the latest one is Azure Data Lake Gen 2. We also call it as ADLS Gen 2. It's a low cost, firstly, highly available and fault tolerant service that's what we want and we have seen this in much detail specifically about cost uh, the storage cost is just getting cheaper and cheaper so per terabytes you will approximately pay somewhere about five dollars that's how cheap it is and it is built for storing massive amounts of data and you can scale or it has the capacity to store petabytes of data and it is Hadoop compatible secured it provides a folder structure so you can organize your data accordingly let's say you want to organize by departments or years months anyhow that you can organize next one is Azure SQL database it's again a fully managed service what this means is you don't have to worry about the updates or patches it will be taken care by the service provider which is Microsoft automatic updates this is again built on the favorite uh, SQL Server engine. So if you have been working on SQL Server or T-SQL specifically in, on Microsoft, you will find your learning curve is very much easy because the same commands and the queries are going to work over here, the same SQL language, which is T-SQL. It's all that you have to just get used to the interface, which shouldn't take you more than one day. That's what I feel. It's again secure and hyperscale. Uh, we'll talk about the hyperscalability uh, because these are the tiers which are there in a separate video Next one is Azure Data Factory 
Azure Data Factory, also called as ADF, is a code-free ETL or ELT tool. This is one of the most demanded tools and skill in the Azure Data Engineering side. We do have a dedicated playlist as well for this. It's again a fully managed service, so no need to worry about the updates or anything that goes wrong. It will be taken care by the service provider. So one of, one of the great features is you have 90 plus connectors wherein you can import or export data to it. It has rich set of activities and data flow transformation which allows you to do that ETL or ELT process and we have covered this very much in detail in the playlist for Azure Data Factory. What you can do over here as well is create, schedule and run the pipelines seamlessly as its code free tool. Next one is Databricks. So Databricks is an independent cloud service offering for big data, machine learning and lake house. Very important, I've mentioned this. Big data, sorry, Databricks is a separate company and entity altogether. However, it is one of the most demanded tool and skill for data engineering. It offers compute as well. What it means is you can spin up clusters on that. You can set up clusters on there. And <coughs> it supports Python, Scala, SQL, and R languages for your development. Next one is Azure Cosmos DB. Azure Cosmos DB is again a fully managed service. It's a NoSQL database, somewhat like uh, you had Edgebase in Hadoop. One of the greatest factors about it is millisecond time response and it's scalable as well which means you can increase or decrease the resources. Another one which I have to mention is Azure Logic App. Azure Logic App is a service where you can create and run automated workflows. So less or very minimum code I would say. It offers a visual designer which enables you to build workflows quickly. So you can just drag and drop and configure things to connect. Here, what you can do is, uh, an example is, you can schedule and send email notifications when an event occurs or move files. So for example, let's say you drop a file into SharePoint and then you want to maybe copy that somewhere or do any other activity. So this is how you would do it. So this was some mention about a uh, few things on Azure Data Engineering side. Apart from this, I would also like to mention that there is one more thing or tool which is nothing but Azure Synapse or Azure Synapse Analytics. Think of Azure Synapse Analytics as one-stop destination wherein you can create databases, you can run your SQL queries. You also have notebooks wherein you can run your Spark code. Plus, you can create pipelines exactly the same way what you do in Azure Data Factory. You can integrate Power BI Workspace as well. I have not yet covered uh, over here as well but we will have a dedicated playlist coming up on Azure Synapse as well in the future which we will talk about right from scratch. So these are few things uh, that you should be learning uh, mainly focusing on Azure Data Engineering side. Hope this gives you perspective. Apart from Azure Synapse uh, we have almost all the things which are being covered into separate playlist on our channel so do check out them. That's it in this video. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.